Great Getaways Ireland is brought to you by Tourism Ireland, go where Ireland takes you. IDA Ireland, Aer Lingus, and our hosts, CIE Tours International, like traveling with friends. Next stop is a castle, straight from the pages of a fairy tale. Behind me is the third castle. The first two were built of wood, starting in the, in the Norman times. And the one behind me was built in 1446. It was never designed for tourism, never planned. From a few thousand people in the 1950s, uh, we got up to about 425,000 people in 2007. It continues to attract huge pilgrims, I think one would call them, especially from the States, to come up to the top of the castle, kiss the stone and gain the gift of eloquence. 130 steps up and I'm ready to earn the gift of gab. The Blarney Stone's around the corner. Bye. I'm going to wee wee down and down and kiss and easy and back to me and up you come and enjoy your day. Thank Could you, sir. Take it to me, do you want you? Ironically, I'm speechless. <laughs> good, good, good. Good, not bad. <laughs> This is the murder hole. Now, a lot of castles uh, from that era had these. If the castle was being stormed or threatened, guys would be up here with bows and arrows or buckets of boiling oil and such. So they'd murder them right here, right through this hole. Murder hole. The fairy tale never ends here on the grounds of Blarney Castle. From the elegant Blarney house, meandering paths, the mystical gardens, wishing stones, caves, dungeons, and even a hideous, hairless troll living beneath a rock. It's truly magical. My favorite thing so far about Ireland has to be uh, the people. I love that you can walk up to anybody, anybody at all, and just ask them a question and they'll tell you a whole story and they'll uh, entertain you for hours. On to the Ring of Kerry, a stunning day trip affording some of the most magnificent vistas in Ireland. These beehive dwellings dot the hills and still keep you dry in the rain after 1,500 years. Beautiful and weathered, Dingle is the classic fishing village and where we found the best fish and chips in Ireland. It's also home to Fungi, the Dingle Dolphin, who's been greeting visitors for almost 30 years. For more open space, explore Inch Strand on horseback like these lucky folks did. Two miles offshore are the Blasket Islands, where hardy people once eked out a tough yet rewarding life, getting all they needed from the stony soil and the wind-blown waters of Blasket Sound. They enjoyed their solitude and legend says, a bit of distance from the British tax collector. About a third of Ireland is covered with what they call peat bogs. Now it's ancient vegetation basically that built up over the centuries and it's about, they say about a thousand years per foot. So this would be about 3,000 years of history right here. Now it's very important to the Irish because they would cut it uh, and it's called turf and they dry it and then burn it. So uh, especially during the times of the famine and this is a very important part of Irish history right here in the peat bogs. Next, we touch down at the Foynes Flying Boat Museum to see and board the world's only full-size replica of the mighty Boeing 314 Clipper. It was a long-range flying behemoth with a history that touched many Americans. Boeing built 12 of these aircraft back in the 30s and Pan American used them to do the first transatlantic flights and they arrived here in Foynes from New York via Newfoundland uh, in Canada. Foynes became the centre of the aviation world because you couldn't fly from uh, the United States to Europe without coming in here on a civilian airliner. What's historic about this is that none of them were actually preserved so we built this from drawings given to us by Boeing. And we're very, very proud of it because not alone can you see outside it, but you actually can go on board and you can also see that all these passengers travelled in the highest of luxury, of course at a very high price. You had to be very important, movie star, royalty or very wealthy to travel in those days. We are very proud, very, very proud of our Yankee Clipper aircraft. 
and we're very proud of all our American visitors because this is your history as much as it's ours. Another type of history was made here in Foynes as well. This very spot was the birthplace of Irish coffee and they'll still teach you the proper way to make it today. And this is just to heat the glass, it doesn't matter how much glass. I put in? No, it doesn't make okay. any difference. Okay. Now it's very important to stir go. your coffee at this stage to dissolve all the sugar. So, just like that. Well, you did a great job. It's going to. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Wendy earned a diploma and a whipped cream mustache. <sighs> The journey continues northward along Ireland's rugged west coast. Now this looks like it's straight out of a Lord of the Rings movie. And it sounds like it too. Behold, the Cliffs of Moor. The towering 700 foot Cliffs of Moor were a welcome sight for weary mariners out at sea who knew they weren't far from home. The cliffs are also a bird watcher's paradise and remain one of Ireland's top tourist attractions. It's certainly easy to see why the Cliffs of Moor are now being considered as one of the seven wonders of the natural world.